holiday. I was supposed to go out to enjoy my radio control activity as usual and also do some FPVs. Uh, unfortunately, it's raining. So rather for me not doing anything right now, uh, doing nothing at home, I already completed other projects. Why not I make a video about touring around my plate, around my room, these places around here. Like you can say it's my main cave. So today is a special video so I hope you enjoy the show as I move around but I'm not going to cover everything I just show you my main hanger and other stuff but if you want to see other stuff you can always visit my website and look at the gallery so let's go for a tour then I have 22 a bear coop Sukhoi bear coop F47 uh, those guys running on 6S 6S also twin EDF for both single EDF and yeah today they considered uh, uh, rare rare uh, planes there's not much around in the market now so especially this guy over here over there is the over first of all I like to collect Tanias this is uh, 1990s uh, Audis I get it for my friend this is a Phantom one uh, B1.1.1 with the multi-flat controller being replaced away from NASA. Uh, no longer use it, it's not so fun to fly. Uh, I bought it from the my friend's RC shop. It's actually in the worst condition. Uh, they sell me a chassis only. This is a pan car. As you can see it's a pan car. Uh, so what I did was I, I paid ten dollars USD uh, bought a new body shell electronics and everything put a lot of work but it was great so ten dollar RC car you see the driver here brushless nice swoop it all you have to do is use your creativity and hard work to rather than paying 300 or 200 to 300 dollars for RC car you can just make your own like starting 10 dollars and recycle everything to make a cool classic this is the re-release version of uh, Tamiya Blackfoot if, if you can if, as you can see yeah, from the stickers supposed to be BF Goodrich on it in the 80s but the re-release version up to the uh, 2000s and forward is actually yeah you know you don't there's no fork logo or whatever but I really like it you know those days when I was a kid I used to like you know in the 80s you know this this thing was a stuff of luxury I just only can watch them those adults playing around I can only watch it in the magazines but now I'm managed to purchase few of those great Tamiya's collection so this give me a great memory give me a lot of smiles by today's standard it's not a good racing or basher model but if you really like the how do you say the, the engineering that the japanese put during the 80s uh, building the uh, radio control model and you know, if you love the aesthetic this time yeah, really give you a, a, those great satisfaction especially if you like a kit builder and want to relive your childhood memories of the 80s you know, 80s is great man the 18 Airwolf Knight Riders uh, released Circa around 1986 and not forget this is I'm not sure it's 1984 or somewhere around 1984 this is the Hornet uh, first time I saw it in 1985 at my uncle's garage 1985 uh, actually I uh, originally I really hate the design but slowly as I age I really, really began to like it really pure looking realistic sand dune buggies of the 80s uh, spike, spiky tires you know sand rail and stuff yeah it's very beautiful it really gave me satisfaction to build this thing I really had fun you know as a stock buggies it's really enjoying and of course um, last time uh, it uses a three-step ESCs now using the latest uh, 
ESC, electronic ESC. It uses the Taba clone radio. It's a clone. It's, this is WL toys, but this is what gave them their model itself. Zeno drone, yeah. Still number one choice among budget uh, drone aerial photography lover. You should get this one if you're in the budget. Runs 4K. Quite good if you can't get a Mavic. DJI Mavic, this is the best. You know. This is very good for the price. I mean, 200 or something USD. Yeah, this is sponsored, okay. But I really love it. Um, LT at 32 or so called the lossy clone. You've seen it before during my reviews. This is the sponsored version. This is the one I purchased. All of them actually comes in one set. This is originally before I turn it, before I mod it into a Tamiya replica. This is actually a uh, SET truck. This is, I believe, no, this is not SET truck. Uh, based on the spoiler, this is the buggy. Only the I swapped the tires from the other side. On. This is the, yeah, I think, a truggy. I think it was the truggy. This is the, yeah, I think, it's supposed to be a DT truck. So, the difference between them is uh, one of the chases, one of the chases actually a very short, I have to extend it. And I did change the electronic, so now it runs like a small mini Z with precision handling. It's worth buying it actually. Uh, this is one model cost around 330 something USD, but you have to do replace electronics for $10. So with overall mods, I think in the under, under $49, you can get a very good precision racing indoor racer or park racer this is very good thing and it's the only smallest tummy in the world you can see on uh, no, a micro 132 this is, this is actually 3d printed body shell so if you miss out uh, with those details go to my website you can download this body shell grasshopper uh, big wig moving along is the monster beetle yeah this came the same year as the blackfoot I really like it because it has a very gold colored scale looking wheels. It still carries the original Volkswagen badge and everything. This is the awesomeness of the 80s RC, you know, monster truck. Looking by the aesthetic is actually really unique on by today's standard. Super scale. Uh, actually buying this the kit costs 100 100 i think 130 something when i purchased it with the rc smart it's really it's really nice i think if you like to build one you should get one yeah tamiya is tamiya's it is classic you don't know grasshopper you know those rc guys enthusiasts everybody knows tamiya grasshopper so my, during my childhood days this is Wow, buggy. Ah, yeah, man. Polycarbonate body shell is not Lexan, super scale, pure Dun buggy. I really love it. it Give me inspiration for me to enjoy RCs. Fun if you like a scale driving. Nice. This is my favorite uh, group flying, and we are when I'm with the cloud. So during the club session, if we have a gathering of flying, so I will bring out my uh, so-called uh, uh, flying fortress. It should be from the manufacturer Free Wing, but under Hobby King rebranding. Team running on 3S. What is the zero five? Yeah, from one zero measure switch running on 3S. I got it from my friend. I just want to get out of the price. This is actually second hand. Well, you got it. It flies very nice. It falls like a glider. Same thing with the flying uh, fortress over here. And don't forget, this is one of the most unique uh, hotliner. It looks like a glider, but it flies very fast. This is the Dura Fly Zephyr V70. 
this is the only electric EDF that sounds like a Airbus or Boeing 747 engine sounds like the real turbine but it's on electric where collectibles uh, hot liner glider uh, still fun to fly hand launch uh, I'm not gonna sell it I used to have two but now I have one so so this is oh yeah by the way if you really like this plane you actually can download it at my website I did uh, remodel and ties it for simulator use so you can download it you so you can download it if you have the Phoenix RC simulator and enjoy flying it it's actually handled exactly the same as the real one this is one of my hangar where I keep my planes so as you can see this is around uh, let's say around 70% of my plane I keep it in my hangar uh, in the middle of the house so you can see there's a warbird yeah, cats, RC cars, crawler, FPV, UAV, drone models, scale planes, aerobatics, yeah, combat planes, and I think almost everything that I've been enjoying throughout my life. And some models is not in here. Uh, maybe I did sort of give it away or I put it on some other rooms. And some of them is still in school, so I put it inside the classroom. Got my crawler, buggies, FPV buggies, crawler, trucks, and everything. I guess you've seen it before in the videos, my YouTube videos, and uh, some of the collection I purchased myself. Some of them secondhand. Some of them been sponsored by my, you know, you know, the usual sponsored if you see my websites. So look, let's talk about the EF planes. This is the FMS EF jets. Quite fast. I bought it from my uncle. Uh, I think I swapped with something. I swapped my spare F16 LX jet the, with this one. Uh, actually, it's very fast. Uh, I always bring it to the beach. This one is actually an Arctic uh, F18. Arctech F18, I have both of them. They really fly very well, very bulky, not that fast. Uh, overall, these three F18 run on 2200, uh, 2200 MH3S LiPo, single EDF 4 that's size EDF. So, this is my go to EDF jet if I need to go out to play every day. Same as those uh, Hobby King. Two seaters A10 EDF jet. I think this is unique because I think it's around 70 mm or 72 part mm EDF jet that runs only a single 2200 3S LiPo2. This one floats like a glider. It has a run time around between eight minutes if you, you know, spin around, you can do aerobatics and stuff. So these four. Are my go to EDF jet when you go out to fly. And there's a rare stuff such as the F14 Playboy, the, the one I call it from Hobby Team. This is rare one last time you sell it very cheap, $50 per kit. And this one also, the Jolly Roger 18. That's my LX jet, big size, um, 70 mm EDF jets. My FPV micro drones. Uh, I'm not into, you know, I don't really like multi rotors, FPV multi rotors much. I I still play it, but it does not give the same satisfaction as flying FPV planes. All right, so if I go to the park, I'll bring this. And some of them are sponsored ones, such as this one, this, and this. This is by I don't I don't know. I really can't remember the website. Did manage to review this one. I think this one is JJRC. Can't review it because it has radio problem spectrum. You know, yeah. This one I did review uh, X95, uh, QX95. Each. This is my favorite. The uh, KK King Kong Q100. Got a bunch of them. Uh, this one here. That is because they are cheap, fast, and you know, 
I think it's cheap batteries and it doesn't really cause much uh, problem if I hit somebody or whatever but it's still fun to plot fly there's uh, multi rotors I, still, I guess you guys still remember the sponsors earliest FBV multi rotor I think circa 2004 or 2011 before you know uh, everybody's doing those FBV racing quad you know, this is my first uh, FBV quad that I make DIY you know Wakela or Ladybird right this is the Wakela Ladybird but they come out with WF toys rebranded WF toys P929 uh, it's a uh, gear Roto can fly for 10 minutes actually it's very good 1S Sparta 550 MH1S can fly you 10 minutes that's very nice and we have a bunch of Eurofly Warbirds uh, yeah I know I mean those days there's a bunch of Euroflies and Obi Kings everybody got excited and it's very scale Eurofly so my first purchase was the FPD and uh, the P is frankly now it's a bit worn out you can see the colors faded and everything so those days when we you know gathering at the local airport at the new airport we fly always fly family and friends this is my favorite things second favorite world planes is the FOU Corsair this is my original purchase uh, that one is the second hand because uh, he can't fly this thing so he always crash it so I decided to you know buy from him before he wrecked everything so now I got it for half, half I think more than half the price you know, it's very cheap because he can't buy it so I managed to buy from him and now I own two so it's cool most of the butterfly like I bought is like this one second hand this one Thunderbolt also I bought second hand and this guy also I bought second hand and if you want to see why it is in the bad condition now because I lost the hatch because the prop is actually very fragile so one of the prop is broken so it's spinning one so it's vibrate a lot so the, the hatch ejected immediately and I lost it but I managed to land it by gliding down uh, on sand and that's it and the fry prop is very fragile so now it's like uh, it's very hard to find but yeah but still it's a very good uh, uh, enjoyable enjoyable thing to fly i still have it a lot of youtube video on this plane it's very fast yet it's very stable but the tricky part is to try to land on a very narrow landing gear british landing gear is uh, you know it's quite challenging to land but all of this warbird is very easy to fly uh, except fou Corsair those guys have top wrong problem but you need a very skillful uh, flying you know, skillful uh, thumbs to fly this plane but I really like it not everybody can fly it but once you manage to fly this uh, for you Corsair you get very proud and this is the smallest uh, 800mm mini Spitfire it's very fast you can see it on my YouTube this one I had uh, and I forgot the brand, but I bought it for second hand. This one kind of a bit glitchy to fly. I said apply it. And of course, uh, you don't see it in YouTube because nobody helped me to take video of it. Maybe next time I'll post a video, but it's still fun to fly. So, okay, for your information, this Warbird, usually all of them come as 100 and one, one uh, 100, 1100 mm size except this guy over here this is the Artec uh, PVP 51 Mustang do not confuse this one with the FPV one they are actually the same but there's no FPV inside here this is the stock Artec uh, uh, Mustang and I heard uh, 960 mm but if you want to see the FPV one it's actually over here so you're looking now the legend yeah, nobody in the YouTube have this kind of Mustang flying on two layers of cloud high above this Traptor's altitude. So this is the plane that you've seen a lot 
uh, my YouTube channel. It's still active. It's still flying today, despite it's almost almost a decade uh, old. You can see still running on the 200 milliwatt five vintage 5.8 gigahertz uh, BTX module. This is a very old boss cam, man. I guess you know, like the uh, oh, very old, very old components. Everything's so old, and uh, yeah, it's quite tiny compared to the bigger size FMS. 1.4 mm stand, so I have both the, the FMS beautiful the one the must stand, the big beautiful doll. Yeah, this is the rarest FMS used to have a, a lot during the 2000 up to 2004, but now you don't see it anymore, including the red tail version FMS. This is running on 4S. Uh, this is actually this guy is actually very easy to find because it's very big you know it's very docile but in terms of aerobatic it's kind of slow compared to 1100 mm uh, Dorafly also I guess you know this is the FPV pits still alive still well I know it's a bit yeah faded and everything's old but yeah it's fantastic you can see over here it's the camera, uh, Azure Ed number 16, the TV camera, actually teaching camera converted. Still very good, still apply nice. Same with those guys over here. Except the difference between the the earlier build has this nose cone over here, but now no more because this nose cone is quite heavy and when it rotates, it vibrates the whole hull. So I remove it. So the second season of APV flying, it does not have the nose cone. The nose cone gone to my go to pits. This is my park flyer pits. This is non FPV. That's the FPV. So do not confuse when you see this on my website. So we got another EF planes. This one actually from Hobby King. NASA, but this is you know good leg supposed to be an ANSA. One sponsored FMS uh, FPA thing. This is my favorite beach plane, the Oh shit, I forgot the name of this plane. Never mind. The check it on my YouTube. This is also my favorite aerobatic planes, also from the brand Arctech. All oh, Arctech planes flies very nice. If you can find Arctech planes, so stop thinking and buying it because those planes are very floppy actually. So Arctech, 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 Arctech Jet, Arctech Jet, Arctech aerobatic and they never fail to impress me with the performance and they only require small amount of uh, battery to power them for a long uh, duration in the air so we have a combat wing combat wing and this is the le this is the legendary long range uav not confused to fpv long range uav is something like robotic flying it can fly autonomously up to okay for example this is the second build the first build I p the first set 84 I put it in the classroom on some schools so now what you've seen is only the left two this is the second build the V2 plus I think it's V2 plus you can see uh, though this is the one that flies into heavy rain 76 kilometer this is range around 56 something kilometer so fly autonomously so I can use my phone to map the waypoint and everything it fly by itself and it's the most cheapest build among all those uh, UAVs or whatever I built and it's still active today it's just that you know our weather is not set so good recently so not much of uh, flying time this month we'll fly it soon this is the ground station for the Z84 uh, including all my FPV UAV, UAV. This is the uh, long range FPV ground station. This is the video receiver diversity using Quantum Hobby King Quantum uh, receiver connected to my FPV goggles uh, remotely. So with this one helical, uh, I can fly with my FPV plane. Assume the FPV plane is running on 200 milliwatt BTX. 
boss cam just now and this one is re running on helical with the diversity uh, I should be getting the best I could get is around um, let's say 13 kilometers between 7 to 13 kilometers depending on the what kind of uh, FPV plane I use so it, it varies but uh, the main point is actually helical have to be pointed precision uh, exactly where the plane is because this is very directional antenna uh, they don't set it anymore so I bought it cheap for um, 27 during the offer at Hobby Kings quite lucky <laughs> I guess you know this this is the DS Drifter the one I've been flying almost daily FPV like flying the clouds this guy over here also knows how to fly the clouds but this guy can fly at more relaxing pace stable and all this stuff so I prefer this thing over glider it looks like glider but this is not glider actually so this is the uh, high wing FPV planes you can see I bought three of them you know three of them actually the original first build actually this one this one have a pen and tail so you can tip around and this has become my staple everyday FPV plane that I can fly it anywhere so if you see a lot of my YouTube videos uh, around 80% of my FPV drifter came from this this guy over here this one have only one pen left and right unlike this one the, I don't know why I love this guy because it has a more uh, p power saving motor more updated motor than this guy over here this one still using the original it's uh, still running on 200 milliwatt BTX power so this is a vintage 2011 I think 2011 2010 BTX it's a boss can really old heavy but still works running an upbird upbird flight controller the yeah, this one APM this guy also, this guy is running on mini APM, FPV, and you know, the, the same. So there's not much. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah, I forgot this cable missing. Oh, okay. Uh, don't fly this guy much because this guy is a bit power hogging. And it has to be tilt. I don't like camera that tilt a lot. So I'd rather use this guy when I FPV around. But there's a video. Uh, on my YouTube, if you want to see one, this guy can fly really high, but this guy can fly two stack of clouds in the sphere. And this guy over here originally was FPV also. There's a camera remaining here, but instead of FPV, this is actually UAV uh, flying. So this guy flies like robotic. It flies by its own using apps. So I think the max it can fly around 27 kilometers, front and fro, drifter, and it has uh, longest telemetry connection among all the FPV planes or UAV planes right here and the back is my Q100 um, drone handmade drone Hobbiton, Hobbiton, Hobbiton uh, cases it's a long time project with the uh, run came out yeah how many flight I certain flight the multi rotor boring <laughs> actually I have two huge size LX Ansiam Jet F22 this one F16 uh, uh, yeah F16 4S uh, EDF 70 mm yeah EDF Jet seldom fly it you know yeah really hard to transport it inside the car and really need a big runway uh, but by this year we no longer have that perfect runway because our club runway is taken over by some companies uh, private property and stuff yeah that's why a lot of I uh, that's why I couldn't a lot of EDF jet planes because people just give it up and then sell it to me Volant Tex Ranger uh, heavy UAV some people like to put it as FPV but I rather fly it as UAV autonomously so this guy actually uses huge size battery I think 3S3P or 4S4P uh, it's a long time already but it's still flyable I think in the future it can become an autonomous
cargo delivery services thing so for now I just let it rest and let the Z84 do the flight roster and that is my 3D profile fan and that is my 3D profile fan so if I like to flip around like a ninja behind the house or at a very small park I'll fly this one interesting to fly if you like to do aerobatics uh, experimenting cool maneuvers like ninja flip knife age prop hang all those funny funny thing hovering around this is meant for professional flying you know, like, you know, like, that is why if you look at my gallery and stuff I like to do slow flying relaxing flying flipping around and things like that it, it runs on a very small battery so, uh, although they look simple actually it's very hard to build you know, because you need it's not something like you know snap it in you have to hold it you have to glue it uh, weight management is very important everything have to be properly uh, put the hardware try to save some weight so it can float better the lighter the plane the better it handles you know some people can't fly this thing because of those built they don't know how to build it they don't know how to save weight that's why it can't fly another thing is they're actually very twitchy plane despite of it looks like something like a simple like kids uh, thing but actually you really need some space to fly it but if you are very pros you really enjoy it. I really enjoy the plane uh, this plane so usually if you look at my YouTube my favorite plane is this guy over here this guy is the s bar so I can you know, flip around upside down and stuff at the field you don't need much space you just hand launch it and do your stuff and this one have the LED I like to fly at night you can see it on the video I fly at night this one is the full size aerobatic planes runs on 2200 3S 2200 3S LiPo this one is good for beach flying very aerodynamic stuff and this comes secondary when it comes to handling the wing uh, or this one is tech one, and the tech one so if you are a very professional flyer love aerobatic get this this is a 3d profile plane but but if like me i like after working hours i like to bring this plane out to fly before i go home so we have a lot of those um i see car trucks and stuff actually they don't look like something that you see in the market because mostly i already have modified it a lot you know some of them you may recognize some of the things that I bought myself, some of them are modified, uh, sponsored and then modified again so let's, let's start with this, this is uh, uh, nothing inside here it's body shell, but this one uh, you've seen it before, this is the PCO2 Team C this one I bought second hand from my friend who, you know, who was who uh, the, the wife got pregnant and he still need money so he managed to sell it off to me, so I got it cheap extremely cheap i don't know how cheap is it but uh, all i know i just pay around 20 percent of the price and those and actually the electronics not so good but i managed to fix it it's very nice brushless pro kit this is the clone version of the team c made by huan chi um, 739 uh, buggy 739 it's already complete uh, apv apv camera over here two wheel drive so if I need to go for FPV like to bash around high speed at the beach at a car park this is my go to but it does not have the sound system like the one you see on YouTube 600 milliwatt uh, 500.8 gigahertz power it's very nice but the parts among this is swappable among each other except the chassis itself so you know I can use this burger and everything uh, whatever yeah it's nice and uh, you might recognize this this is the fyo3 except recently the tire is not this is not the original wheels this is the original wheels i don't know because it is china made the rubber becomes so stiff but this is the already converted into fpv fyo3 or known as or the rebranded version of the yellow colored the real toys 1284 something something yeah, this is one fourth scale, but actually, if you put one ten body shell uh, touring car, uh, rally car, it really fits. Uh, so, yeah, beautiful.
FPV truck, yo. So uh, usually this is my solo run if I need to race around the park garden uh, on the road. Uh, usually with this setup, uh, 600 milliwatt, 5.8 gigahertz uh, radio link receiver and stuff like that. The FPV system you can run around. I tested on the airport. You know we have the RC Club airport. You can go up to the best it can go if I held out my radio high uh, exactly 1000 uh, 1000 meter so that means one kilometer straight line of sight uh, with the FPV goggles on so this is my treasure build I will never sell it because it's really hard to build you can see there's a driver here there's a camera FPV camera uh, HD Azure uh, at number 16 Noble steering everything super scale you know. but if you want more details I have it on my YouTube and then my um, uh, uh, websites yeah. this one I bought it from my uh, RC shop friend it's a Kyosho Sandmaster the, the good thing is you can actually download this I did make 3D models of this and made it used for simulator you, so you can drive actually the actual thing is a simulator i managed to replicate it so i copy it so yeah man and then not really fun to drive because this the lower sus the lower suspension is very low so it might get hit when hit the bum but still it's a good uh tarmac racer and he has a scale look so good you know. so this why I, that's why I, this is my the the my recent acquired uh, acquired model. I didn't bought it actually. I traded with my uncle, the uncle that you see in my picture. If you notice something missing around here, one five scale gasoline monster truck gone. So I this one actually I swapped with my uncle's SCX ten fully upgraded you know metal thing uh, truck because one five scale. Petrol is too big for me. We don't have space to drive. Even in the neighborhood, it's going to be very noisy. So I rather do rock call, rocks, rock crawling because we have a lot of rock crawl, crawling track behind the house. Full metal, man. Everything is fully hooked up. You know, like just ask no question, just drive and forget about upgrades. Everything is already totally maxed out. You know, like yeah, man. Full scale. That's not FPV and where and this tree is my pride and joy this is the uh, real toys k949 or should i say earlier it was wl toys a333 if you forgot a333 last time was sell on hobby king but actually renamed as k949 is a Valterra twin hammer clone but i really fully modded into FPV and the headlights this and one this is the one that you see on my video that you know drive convoy with my other friends during my FPV okay, it's great for night FPV because it has a very good uh, viewing lens at night HD recording run cam headlights and stuff <coughs> 1000 milliwatt VTX 5.8 gigahertz radio link Four channel receiver, yeah, can acquire uh, a good range of one kilometer straight line range. So this is good, you know. This is the PCV board for the run cam where the recording is fully pan camera steering with three D printed and three D printed is like wow. This is my jam. This is my second jam. This is the one of one or two eight or something something uh, WL toys also, but all. all looks like a axial red scorpion thing and this one also this was built first before this one and uh, this one is fully modified uh, it's heavy it has the same configuration same setup as this one except this one actually running on uh, 720p hd camera you can see this the driver here with the pen tilt everything uh, scale dashboard uh, one ten scale dashboard from the Jeep uh, to rip it off the VTX. Nice. This is what I use during the daylight convoy. And yes, of course, 
yours truly while we fortunately while we now is converted into FPV you know if you, if you seen my this year mid year project I'll show you how I built it you know if you want to know more you just look at the video it has very long until now 5.8 gigahertz yeah um, there's a camera outside rather than I put inside I don't want to ruin the aesthetic helmet driver so I rather put the camera on the sides same configuration like this one have the sound system engine sound system complete except among all these with the sound system everything this one running on two-wheel drive so it's, so the advantage is it really is nice all right let's look at my radio controllers you can see I have a uh, variable types of radio controllers from air to ground uh, pistol grid type of controllers including the old ones modified UHF LRS uh, long range 2.4 including the one I use a lot FPV but you might notice that even though I fly a lot you know like professionally I don't use expensive controller like Taranis, Taba and stuff like that mm. usually during my young days I always fall for those expensive stuff but as I get old uh, and I know how to do stuff so I don't need to spend this kind of much most of the controller I spent only $50 per controller even though I use it for you know, serious long range FPVs and UAV stuff for example <coughs> let's start with this one and I know you guys have seen this thing a lot uh, yeah this is the one I used to fly my FPV planes all my FPV planes using this one so you don't have much uh, um, yeah so this is the controller I use for my FPV as you can see <coughs> why I managed to push my plane to fly beyond 5 kilometers sometimes 10 kilometers sometimes high above in the clouds two stack of clouds and stuff like that you know you can see the antenna all of them are very directional this is like a well, I use my feet to call it a uh, uh, patch antenna uh, I forgot how many dbs are uh, 16 dbis 8 dbis it's quite long already I purchased this thing since 2011 I don't know uh, 2010 or 11 or something and this one is on the radio side this is on the video receiver side 5.8 gigahertz patch also i forgot how many dbis is it yes, is there anything DBI here? no it's 5.8 but as you all know this is using a very old video receiver a boss cam uh, what is it 305 uh, uh, i forgot it should be under the label it's quite old i don't like very old this is a very old 9XR controller it's not the pro one that can pop and stuff basic you know cheap I get it for $50 yeah it does not include the TJT uh, module but still it's a cheaper build with a 3D printed stand to separate the video receiver and the video radio transmitter away from each other I use this portable 3D printed stand to hold the module so this is the auxiliary uh, auxiliary output to my video Google including the head tracker so this is what I use for my FPV so no Taranis nothing fancy just chunk cheap DIY stuff but it works you now five kilometers and beyond yeah man you don't actually you don't have to spend too much on FPV, you just have to be smart enough how to do modification and stuff, and all it works. Uh, I think all the pros people, uh, not only me, including all the communities of the FPV pilots, everybody have to do DIY uh, to make their planes capable of doing more than uh, what is actually uh, RTF is supposed to do. So there's no shortcut for success. You have to do DIY a lot. This is my first radio transmitter. The Turney G9X, man, this is old. Uh, not sure, year 2000. Then quite old thing. It's quite broken in every places. I have to use the, uh, you know, nuts it's kind of DIY things because everything is broken, but it works. This one I used to fly my 3D profile plane, cheap 3D receiver and everything, no fail safe or whatever. 
So, but it works. I think you don't find this thing anymore in the market. But if you do find it, it should be cheap. Ten, fifteen dollars. So it works. So I got the, as usual, the, for the western side, you know, Spectrum, very popular for PNF planes. But I don't use it much. I don't use it much. Yeah, but yeah, it's okay. I got it for. I didn't purchase it. I just trade my old planes with my uncle. I think, I think I forgot. Is it F six? Oh yeah, I think it's F sixteen. F16 with other planes for the Spectrum so it's a butter trade so I just save up money to buy Spectrum but it's pretty much useless in the Asian region because we don't use Spectrum frequency in our region so it's just a uh, for me it's now it's a collector this one is Wakera F7 it has the FPV LCD on here fortunately my Wakera drone run away as usual Wakera drone will run away I guess you still remember I have those uh, in, uh, those in my gallery of the Wakera. So you know those days I think year I think 2018 or what? I don't know what year is that? It's quite so long. The drone just simply just uh, some ESC problem. One of the yes got burned. Wakera 3 QX350. I guess if you Google 3X350 X something something I think it has a lot of problem I think mine's one is ESC and just pop into the lake and that's it so what has I have left is the Evo controller yeah it looks ergonomics beautiful but the uh, product sucks but again I have another one this one is dedicated for uh, F UAV flight so this is the one I use you can see me like you know, especially when I fly my Volatex UAV, Volantex Ranger, UAV Drifter, UAV Z84, the the three other Z84. This is the one I would use to uh, control this uh, autonomous plane. Just take off, just take off and shut the radio off and let it fly. And then by the time it return back, I just take over and land. That's it. It's a simple controller. Don't don't do much. It doesn't do FPV. It just take off and launch the uh, UAV plane. But I did use it for park flying, uh, aerobatic planes, park flyer, anything that is short range. I would use this transmitter. And for the later season of 2018 until now, this despite being despite this thing being cheap and underrated controller actually i use this controller for serious scale flying from big jets scale warbirds everything uh, you know i transfer all my uh, model setup into this why because this one despite it's cheap it has um, a lot of telemetry functions uh, okay it has a lot of telemetry function and everything you need in, into this small radio it feels nice in hand it's very light it uses a rechargeable battery 4AA it's very convenient so uh, re receiver also very cheap and then the radio also connects the radio protocol is actually very solid I managed to fly my scale warbirds uh, and it flies great you know Sensi sensitivity and the function everything but the things I like is it has a battery voltage indicator it means a battery telemetry so uh, without using a voltage beeper you know the one that you attach the beeper onto the lipo packs and you have to hear the audible sound from the plane as it pass by to know how much voltage left I just use this controller and the controller will actually uh, monitor the voltage actually if I connect the plane there should be another battery indicator over here so that uh, instead of hearing I can hear it directly on the radio that mention okay you need to land the batteries left left this this level and I have to land so this is the advantage uh, so it's cheap radio with everything so, but the thing is the society thinks so low of this thing so you know it's like uh, okay crappy you know buy a colonies buy this and buy expensive that no need you know actually we just need something simple like this with so much function and you just fly and forget you know so this is now my go-to controller to fly everything even the big planes so uh, currently I'm still process of buying more receiver for my remaining 
uh, plane so I can fully use this, this radio but currently all my planes from PITS, <coughs> EDF jets, the big ones are using this controller uh, uh, I like this controller you know, I don't care what people say it does its jobs and everything all you need is a skill to fly your plane so it's a good controller uh, I'm not sure 16 models or something but uh, I still need more of this radio if the uh, model is not enough to accompany but yeah nice controller but the others I don't have to mention is another an X radio but instead of turning G this is actually by Fly Sky uh, slightly darker color I think this one I also use it for um, scale at scale Warbirds flying some cheap art tech uh, on car radio including crawler and everything so this is my professional radio 255 GHz M11 so this is the one I use during uh, for racing I mean local competition like race buggies uh, nitro and everything uh, by today's standard it's quite an old but M11 it's old by today's standard old model because everybody goes for uh, M12 and stuff like that but still workable uh, but it's quite expensive the, for the receiver <coughs> but this is my early days you know, because I was fall for this branded stuff but if I knew I would go for something cheaper like radio but yeah it's still good and this is vintage radio as you can see from the antenna it's supposed to be using AM frequency but why I still using it because it's not actually running on AM now I feed it outside using the more latest UHF uh, transmitter that can transmit up to 4 kilometers on the ground because this thing is running 4 to 3 megahertz so this one I would use for long range FPV, ground FPV so you can see here this is I managed to find the PPM pin inside this one and then relay it back to the transmitter so don't throw away your old MXA, Sanwa or whatever transmitter it can be reused again and besides it's the Sanwa so the feel is nice on your hand when you control it except this only have 3 channels but it's good for FPV for basic FPV this one also <coughs> all MXA but this one are running on 2.5 2.4 gigahertz on air radio module so this one more likely you can give you I'll give you around 1.5 kilometers running on the ground because you know air module for your price card DFTV has is also a low range 2.4 and this is stock 2.4 a spare one I'm not sure maybe in the future you can see me mod again I'll make a tutorial how to how do I pull the PPR, PPM signal out into the external radio module I have a uh, yeah man um, you might surprise uh, for me for guy hardcore FPV despite of um, FPV a lot I don't have headshot I used to have one but it's very cheap fat shop during those days it was not the glorious days of the fat shop but I managed to sell it off it's a B91 B922 something model but now uh, but now I'm currently still using the classics uh, 8 channel 5.8 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz dual band goggles thing 10 years ago model this is 2019 right? okay uh, I think it should be 10 years or something 10 or 9 years old uh, it's still workable, have a head tracker and everything you need the advantage is it has 2.4 GHz uh, video receiver inside so it's dual band 5.8 and 2.4 so I can switch around and go for long range still good so it, it has a DVR but it's a lousy DVR which in pro DVR sometimes you can record sometimes not that's why I couldn't, couldn't post my OSD videos on it because it can be random and I also have another one inside here uh, oh shit it's stuck N another another set spare set of the boss cam in there because somebody give up FPV so it sell to me cheap price got the helis usually last time I have a lot of them but I sold off this is what I have remained helis uh, before the multi rotor those days we had to fly helis you know, but it was like challenging it's fun and expensive and we have these uh, trucks this is a vintage uh, semi mini madness maybe i'm planning to put uh you know wild wheelie body shell on it you know i bought it second hand i also bought it second hand this is a 
Tamiya QD um, Monster Beetle Micros, I love Micros um, Let's start with this one This one actually the WL Paw is A212 Was converted into replica Tamiya King Cap Nissan Circa 1986 replica The big wing You've seen it before right? Or, uh, you've seen it in the latest videos 3D printed uh, bo bodies uh, Yeah 3D printed body. This is also 3D printed body. These three are Subotex, uh, cheap, for 40, 45 dollars model. One of them is a sponsored one. Two of them is uh, I have to purchase on my own. So it, like this one, you can see it's a Subotex, um, but very good model actually. So uh, underrated, but nobody knows. But the thing I like the chassis is the chassis looks similar like a Tamiya and I just slap in the 3D printed body shell looks like a vintage 1984 buggies yeah man got yeah so oh shit the thing fell off actually it's secured by uh, uh, secured by uh, uh, 3M tape yep okay alright big wing king cap all those legend big wing king cap uh, boomerang hot shot Ready print the hot shot. This is the my Orlando. Man, this guy parks so tight because I have too much of them. One of them is sponsored, and few of them I have to purchase from several vendors. And originally the first version is supposed to be F one fifty. Second comes with the Jeep Wrangler, Mitsubishi, and the last is the Land Rover. We seen the video before, and I love it. And recently this year, uh, recently this November, they released another one. I think it's uh, also a Ford pickup, longer one with a different chassis, uh, scale chassis and have front independent suspension, front motor uh, mounted and rear axles I haven't got it but maybe soon I'm gonna get it after I purchase the SJ Cam SJ8 Pro camera so um, you might see this one and uh, next one next new models, the Orlando in the future but currently this is all I have for my 5.1 it's supposed to be 4 generation but I got the extra one <laughs> extra because of the sponsorship but for the all on those yeah but they're all very nice i did make a track if you look at the youtube and maybe i'll make a review uh, of the comparison between them and then you know if you want my advice there's my nitro if i go for racing weekends but they are very messy stuff you know gas things wpl c14 uh store project uh, it's, it's just a kit. I got it from my friend shop, you know, got it cheap. But they are, uh, you know, uh, I don't feel I really like it. I, I, I bought it because it's a scale body. But maybe if I have one, I'll put some electronics in and make it FPV and stuff. But it's a good, it's just that, you know, I don't waste money for something that I really don't have much use, both indoor and outdoor. Too big for indoor, too small for outdoor. And this one is my favorite one I bought from Hobby King. This is the uh, crawler uh, motor on axle. This is the one you see me and me crawling around in the rooms, caves, office, and stuff. It's a fun crawler. It's easy to build one. I did make a tutorial how to build one, written one. So do watch my YouTube videos if you want to see it in action. This is the best crawler if you want to do FPV crawler. Uh, this is my legacy old 2000 something something 2008 or something uh, x-ray uh, m18 rep um, not to say clone but this is actually by uh, what's that famous Japanese guy who make who introduced NRX 18 Nanda this is Nanda 118 we used to race this thing in my club so 118 by today's standard is the standard size for indoor racing uh, touring it's a nice, uh, nice chase, <laughs> nice car to race around. This is the hard body I bought it from toy shop, the body shop, the toy shop. The, the s both have the same cases. So I want 18. This is my favorite uh, go-to radio. Uh, running my Tamiya's and everything. If you need to go for bashing, my bashing controller, Fly Sky. But if I want to go for FPV, I would use uh, Radio Link RC4G. And this is one RC4G, the one I use to control my yeah, those, those three guys over here, including these two all FPV trucks. 
yeah they're actually cheap i bought it for 50 dollar only and oh okay uh, the the the, the covers somewhere inside loose and it has something like a radio booster inside this is the only radio that i trust this thing originally on stock it can go up to 100 1000 meter also on a uh, tested at our um what do you call it uh at the airport our abandoned airport where our club was uh flying our planes so tested already so if you found this radio it's a, it's a good radio for fpv all right man so that's for this hangar so let's go on the other room to check out my workshop and the place like mostly and stuff so let's go so this is the table where i work on my models and everything so if you notice that if you notice in the history of my website i'm originally built 3d models more into graphics more into uh, building gaming add-ons and last time also working with the gaming companies and which is explains why i have uh, a lot of custom 3d model builds on my website and stuff like that oh i forgot yeah there's a uh, rc models over there the uh, hobby king yeah tiger mods the mini size tiger mod it's very beautiful very rare they don't sell it anymore Oh, it's a rare item. Uncompleted co projects. I don't have budgets for the electronics, still waiting for my budget, but still working on, on it. This is uh, Zord Dart. Uh, it's uh, most popular for those people who race around. It's actually detachable on everything. Everything is like. Ah, AR Mini Wing. Actually, I managed to maiden it, but something wrong with the flight controller. So the thing is, uh, everything is. Yeah, you can see the underneath here is there's an APM 3.1 uh, Fly Sky, but still not yet. How do you say? Not yet the confirm uh, uh, if, uh, to do the mission and stuff. This is supposed to be autonomous plane. I'm planning to do FPV for this one. This is autonomous. Hopefully to replace the role of the Z84. But so far I have a uh, flight controller problems. I'm waiting for the budget. So both of them are compliments from the Sonic model company and yeah man sorry guys but you know it's still not yet made it even this this is like you know they sent it one year ago but I haven't finished the projects. Hopefully it will be made soon once I get a proper project. This is my workstation. I'm not using desktop anymore, I prefer something mobile. Got a 3D printer and for you guys who are watching my video right now i'm sorry guys a lot of people asking me to 3d print replica tamiya or my 3d printer but i recommend them to 3d print it at their shop because for this printer to print it's a bit rough the quality this is the first 3d printer in the market you know to market into the home but the resolution is very bad uh, but can be used but i have to use every time i print I have to use a sandpaper to make it smooth so you guys better print it at the shop because this is good for my prototyping when I do 3D printing and there's a lot of work for me to you know, to make it looks perfect you know, to smoothen up the rough rough resolution printing resolution on the surface oh by the way man uh this is the 2.4 gigahertz uh, uh video transmitter diversity 2.4 not 5.8 so uh, so you might notice uh, some of the models I've flown very long range I use this one so, but you have to use a 2.4 and the 433 for the for the radio you can see my rock crawler track for the Orlando I'm planning to make another one but this is the one that you see a lot of the videos yeah stash nothing interesting to see this is the Subotech body shirt that you see just now my hanger so instead of throwing away, I just put it here. And most importantly, if you are radio control enthusiast or builder, you must have stash and inventory of parts to keep your hobby alive. You know, I have a servo horn. Man, this thing to bulk everything. AWG wires, mini servos, uh, camera, 
video transmitter or no more video transmitter antennas i rather build my own antenna say pv antennas video transmitter uh, there's a new pack uh, prop accessories flight controller a bunch of flight controllers apm gps that's really small micro gps man so yeah, man. technology really evolves man. now we can we can have those days i like around eight or six years ago it's supposed to be really bulky but now it's become smaller and cheaper got it everything from banggood man because banggood is the closest you know place for us to buy we asia here uh, stuff you know everything is well kept well labeled so it's easy for me to refer what i want when i have a project and everything is what i have is here so i have plenty of stuff uh, recycled parts so I don't simply throw away any wires after I do soldering I just keep it because it can be reused again so that's why I keep my stuff you know uh, keep my build uh, build uh, in budget including sometimes most of these parts I get it for second hands you know for RC community there's always people who give up give up playing RC's model so this is what I got this is the set of EDF use EDF yeah. more EDF parts things more EDF parts and stuff this is my goal to get the timing uh, I don't I, I still need to get the frog the fox super champ lunchbox have these that uh, yeah the tr I 3d printed that but that thing doesn't exist anymore so it's legit i got it already small size i have small size i already have small size yeah but i still need the actual size i got it yeah i really printed it charger balancer i still use imax me 6 ac and tenji akusel 6 i own this thing for more than i think 10 years it's still running after 10 years still very good it's a very good charger actually and I highly recommend it if you guys found it. This is a very budget charger and still running uh, for many years. No problem for me. DJI charger, not bad, usable but okay. You know, uh, and I match charger and everything. This is actually my mini workspace. If you need to do some soldering and stuff, this is the things that you see uh, from my website and gallery. This is where I work it. It's a budget workspace. You don't have to spend much. You know, just do some IKEA stuff and stuff. My paint, you know, everything grease. So for RC and modeler, you, and this is my tools, my secondhand spray works I bought from my friend for five dollar. Things very cheap. Yeah, I think it's five dollar. I bought it. Everything. Some. This is for. This is scale rock roller parts. Scale rock roller parts and you know electronics, wiring, soldering and glue and stuff all right guys thanks for watching this video today uh actually there's a lot of things to cover but we are out of time i'm planning to make this video actually because uh today is raining like outside here still raining rather than not doing anything right? so i think it's better for me to make a video to fill up the time but uh, planning to make another video soon so maybe like a uh, how-to tutorial or maybe giving advice about RC stuff or other things that you know might contribute to your radio control or FPV or drones or building developments so I hope you subscribe to my video so I can make another video soon for you so if you like it give it thumbs up and see you soon